everybody. I hope you are doing well wherever you are and you had an awesome week and you're ready for today's uh, session. Two weeks ago, we began a series called The Kingdom of God is Like and the first episode we did Kingdom Soil. Today we are doing Kingdom Patience. I know patience is a very tough call. Uh, for me it is, I don't know about you. So today uh, we're going to delve into Kingdom Patience, talking about patience. Patience is a very I have people around me who are not patient, honestly speaking. But yeah, so today I want us to look at a few things and know, uh, know more about kingdom patience. Before that, let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we come before you. We want to thank you for this wonderful day that you've given to us to go into your word. And I pray that, Lord, uh, everything that you're going to discuss today is going to be of benefit to our bodies, benefit to our spiritual bodies, Jehovah God, in our spiritual work. We ask that you may teach us, that you may talk to us, that your Holy Spirit is going to interpret your word to us so that it's going to be easy for us to understand. We thank you and we worship your name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So I have a few questions that I'd like to ask. Um, <clears throat> Uh, not really questions, but situations in life. Think about an engaged couple. Remember, I'm talking about already, but not yet. Like, you're an, an already, but not yet expression. You're there, but, you know. So, an engaged couple. These people are planning to get married. They are not married, but they're planning to get married. And so, they are there, but not yet there. Are you getting the point? Okay. Another uh, thing. I don't know if you guys buy things online. So an item that has been purchased online, but hasn't arrived yet. I don't know if you buy things on Jumia. <laughs> you know better. And uh, so you're waiting for your, or Amazon, and you're waiting for your uh, item to come. You, it's there, but not yet there. Are you getting my point? Um, last example, a uh, football team that is playing, they are, they are leading and uh, they are at nine, 90 minutes. Like they have, let's say, two or five minutes left and they are leading. So me, I'm a Manu fan. And of late we've been, uh, <clears throat> we've been, topping the table, let me say that. And so whenever we are playing personally, I am so anxious towards the end of the game. So, uh, what do these situations have in common? You just think about it. And how is patience an important character trait for us as followers of Jesus? So these situations fit the already but not yet category. And our world is filled with this reality. Uh, we know something will happen, but we must wait. Just think about, you know, something has to happen, but you have to wait. Something, something is in the process of emerging, elements of life, or something is in the process of emerging, yet it isn't finished. We know what the outcome will be, but it hasn't arrived yet. It's one of the most basic elements of life, and it is true of God's kingdom as well. You know, Jesus died for our sins and rose to new life, but he, he has not yet returned to make all things new. In the meantime, we are called to work for his kingdom and seek to be patient. We need to be patient before Christ comes back. So I want us to look at a few scriptures and see what they teach us about being patient. And we are going to read from Matthew chapter 13. Matthew 13, verse 24 to 30. I'm giving you a few seconds to open your Bibles. Matthew chapter 13, 24 to 30. And it reads, I'm reading from the new uh, King James Version. Another parable he put forth to them, saying, the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the tares also appeared. 
So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does, does it have tears? He said to them, An enemy has done this. The servants said to him, Do you want us then to go and gather them up? But he said, No, lest while you gather up the tears, you also uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, First gather together the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them and gather the wheat into my barn. So what comes to mind immediately after re reading this passage? For me, it's that the, the owner of the, of the shamba or <laughs> the wheat planter was, was a patient. Somebody came, akapanda apu, akayeka izo ma weeds apu kando and the, uh, the workers asked him what they needed to do, but he was patient enough because he was afraid if they uprooted the weeds, they would uproot the wheat also. So they had to be patient. He had to be patient. Uh, are we normally patient like that? If it were you, would you do the same thing? So understanding the kingdom of God is a bit tricky. Uh, and uh, that is our first story. I forgot to tell you. Uh, what we are looking at, at Ma in Matthew chapter 13, verse 24 and 30. And that is one, we are striving to understand God's kingdom. Okay? So, understanding the kingdom of God is a bit tricky. But that's one of the reasons Jesus used parables to describe the kingdom. And what are parables? Parables are uh, situations that uh, look like, let me say that. Uh, th like uh, in that parable about the wheat and the weed and the sower, we put it into our lives and see how we can apply that lesson to our lives. So situations that look like something, but to teach us something, okay? And then, so understanding the kingdom of God is a bit tricky, but that's one of the reasons Jesus used parables to describe the kingdom, an engaging way to help us grasp this divine reality, okay? When we see Jesus loving outcasts and healing deceased people, we aren't just seeing a series of random events, but the emergence of a new type of kingdom, a kingdom that is not fully here, but already is breaking in. So you remember when I was asking you, already, but not yet there. So God's kingdom is here, but it is not fully here. So in the process before it is here fully, God is trying to teach us some things, okay? And in this case, God is trying to teach us patience, how to be patient as we wait for him to come fully, as we wait for his kingdom to be here fully. CG, come we are in the right page. Okay. So first thing, uh, to strive to understand God's kingdom. All right. Second thing, when we understand God's kingdom, we understand God's patience. So we need, we need to understand God's kingdom. And when we understand God's kingdom, we then understand his patience. And um, I'll read, I want us to read again from 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 1 to 10. 2 Peter 3, 1 to 10. Uh, 2 Peter, Peter is among the last books of the New Testament. <laughs> 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 1 to 10, it reads, Beloved, I now, I now write to you this second epistle, in both of which I stir up your pure minds by way of reminder, that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior, knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to their own lusts, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. For this, they will, they will fully forget that by the word of God, the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of water and in the water, by which the world that then existed perished, being flooded with water. But the heavens and the earth, which are now preserved by the same word, are reserved for fire until the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. Verse 9, 
The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both, both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. So, a uh, question in um, or what how do you see god's patience in your life how do you see god's patience in your life if uh, when i look at uh, second peter peter sorry second peter chapter 3 verse 9 it says the lord is not slack concerning his promise as some count slackness but his long suffering toward us not willing that any should perish but uh, but all should come to repentance we are not easy people let me tell you if you never knew, if no one told you, you're not an easy person. <laughs> and uh, we fail so many times, we fall, we do things that do not please God. God is our creator. And uh, let me, uh, I'm just thinking you are a parent or my parents, they tell me to do something and I keep on doing the opposite of what they're telling me to do. I, I think it's a thicker time patients yao ita run out and they will niangukia vibaya sana na makofi na viboko. God is really patient with us. We do things that he instructs us in his word on what to do, uh, but many are the times that we don't do what he tells us to do. But he doesn't give up on us because he doesn't want any of us to perish, as we've seen in verse 9 of uh, 2 Peter 3. He doesn't want want any any of us to perish uh, i'll repeat the verse so that you, maybe you can uh, see what i'm saying the lord is not slack concerning his promise as some count slackness but is long suffering toward us not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance he desires that we go to him in repentance he desires that we seek him he desires us to be patient and wait for him are you patient are you waiting on the Lord? So, for us to understand God's kingdom, we, are, we understand God's... When we understand God's kingdom, we also understand God's patience. It's amazing to think about how patient God is. We have a hard time waiting a few minutes for a response to a text. Men, sometimes I send a text and I'm there waiting. I keep on checking my phone and seeing if uh, the person I had texted has replied, you know. We can be thankful that God is not like that. Take a moment to think about this past week. Where did you mess up? Now remember that God is totally just and holy. Are you starting to see how patient God is? And uh, last week, or last Sunday, was Valentine's. And I know Didi, um, Didi, Sarah, Luke, and Lukera were telling us about Valentine's and everything about it. And uh, maybe on that particular day or during that week, you did something that showed how impatient you are. Okay? We are being reminded that God is not like that. Okay? He is just and holy. And we need to see how patient God is with us. So first, strive to understand God's kingdom. When we understand God's kingdom, we understand God's patience. I want us to see our third uh, point. We are invited to learn how to be patient as God is patient. So after we understand God's kingdom, when we understand God's kingdom, we understand God's patience and he, and he invites us to understand uh, to be patient as he is, okay? It's not just that God is patient. He also invites us to participate in his patience. Just as God is patient with the world and with us as individuals, he calls us to be patient. Uh, I've been asking myself, who's the most patient person I know? And uh, how do I see patience demonstrated in his or her life. Um, I was thinking really hard, looking at my friends and my family, and then I remembered my mother. 
My mother is a very patient person. Uh, you would tell her we are meeting at t at ten. First of all, she's a good time. She's a timekeeper. Let me say that. I don't know where I got my not keeping time, but for her, she's a very good timekeeper. So you'll tell her we are meeting at ten. By ten, she'll be there. And then she won't start calling you. Eh, uko api? Nimesha fika uli seva tu kutane sani ne saizi ni sani ne uko api? No, she'll give you like five minutes first of all. Uh, after five minutes, she'll call you if you're not there. Where are you? Nilifika apa by ten as we had agreed. And then umambe ni patie five minutes ni fike atasema sawa. So. In small things like that, I've seen how my mother is patient with people and uh, I'd like to apply the same thing. But first of all, I'd like to be a timekeeper like she is. But anyway, so you search your friends, your family, who is the most patient person you know and how do they demonstrate uh, their patience, okay? Um, what moments in life have helped you practice patience and maybe even become more patient. What are those experiences? Why are those experiences so powerful? So I'm, this is a question I'm posing out to you. What moments in life have helped you practice patience? Okay, and maybe even become more patient. Why are those experiences so powerful? So we've learned three things. We've, we've as just a reminder, we are talking about uh, the kingdom of God is like and today we are talking about kingdom patience and we've seen from scripture from Matthew the parable and even from first second Peter chapter 3 verse 1 to 10 and three points we get one one of them is uh, uh, king strive, we strive to understand God's kingdom and then when we understand God's kingdom we understand God's patience and also we are invited to learn how to be patient as God is patient God is asking us to be patient as he is. So how are we supposed to live out this? Where in your life do you most need more patience? Where in your life do you most need more patience? You, you, you know yourself. So where do you think you need more patience? For me, I think I need more patience. Well, I, I serve in a ministry called Youth for Christ, and uh, we usually have meetings during the week. And sometimes, uh, our meetings are two hours. We start from four to six. Like our Bible studies are from two, from four to six. And then people come late. They come one hour later. And they want by six, you are done. And you had planned for activities, two hours activities. And then people come one hour late. So I think I need, sometimes I just get angry. Me, I, I give up God. But um, I think that's one place in my life that I need more patience. And uh, how can you practice being more patient with a family member, a classmate, a friend, yourself? So this question we need to ask ourselves, how can we practice be being more patient with a family member, a classmate, a friend, or even yourself? Jesus prayed that God's kingdom would come and that heaven and earth would be one. That's his heart. Jesus wants to see his redemptive reign established. Let's leave that out. Let's be the answer to Jesus' prayer. But while we work for God's kingdom, let's be patient with each other and with ourselves. While we work in his kingdom, let us be patient. Let us wait for him patiently as we work with other people and even with ourselves. Before I finish with the word of prayer, we have to have a verse that helps us remember about being patient. So Psalm 86 verse 15, it says, But you, O Lord, are a God of compassion and mercy, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love and faithfulness. Psalm 86 15, But you, O Lord, are a God of compassion and mercy, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love and faithfulness. Let us lean to God. Let us look up to him to be patient. Trust you me, trust you me, he won't fail you. When we go to him and ask him to give us patience, that is what he will do. 
We know where we have failed in our patients, in our life, with the people that God has put in our lives. Let us seek Him and ask Him to teach us to be patient. Let us pray. Lord, we want to thank you for this wonderful lesson that uh, you've given to us today. And we know patience is a very important virtue in our lives and sometimes we fail. We fail in being patient. We fail in, in waiting on you, Jehovah God. And we pray that you may forgive us in our weaknesses, that you may forgive us in our impatience, Jehovah God, and that you may teach us to be patient, that we may learn uh, about your kingdom. And in learning about your kingdom, we learn about being patient in you and we learn that you seek us, you, you desire us to be patient, oh God. And may you teach us and show us in, which, in what to do, in which to do, in which ways to follow, oh God. We thank you for your word, we thank you for this time. We pray that, uh, that it, 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 it is planted in our hearts and it will grow and we'll be able to apply it. For I pray this believing and trusting in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much. Hope to see you next week. Have a lovely week. Bye.